name is Wilson Smith. I'm a footwear designer at Nike. My position now is Creative Catalyst in the Nike Zoo, which stands for Special Other Operations. We do special projects. So special projects, we create a lot of different products for either specific individuals, like the Kobe's are created in the special projects group. The uh, Air Jordans are created in special projects. But we also take on different types of uh, like, you know, way futuristic kind of things, what's going on in footwear, different ways of thinking about shoes and, the, and just thinking about the way, you know, products are made. It's, there's a lot of exploration. It's, it works very close with the Concept Creation Center and with the Innovation Kitchen. So that's where Special Projects works at, at Nike. You know, okay. So. Now, now does this have, this has more or less to do with shoe design as aesthetics are concerned or shoe design as far as what they do to your feet when you put them on. Right, uh, that's cool. You know, actually, we get to create, uh, you know, just what is, the, what is the shoe all about? What are we trying to do? Like, we will create a product that not only reflects, say, a, a certain personality, a certain style, but it's really all about performance. So the shoe has to really work right, and we work with the Nike Sports Research Lab, which we'll come up with, uh, a lot of the latest understandings of the way the foot moves and just what's, what are some of the details in that area or maybe specific to a sport, just the way a sport would be approached the best way. And so we'll take that and couple it with, say, what is our focus? Who is, what is the product all about? If it's about Kobe or if it's about Michael or if it's about, um, you know, some specific sport, we're, we're basically paying attention to, to what's the latest trend or the latest take in that sport, we look at the personalities, the styles, the things that are driving their lives, and we want to we want to reflect that also. So, so it, so it speaks to performance of the product, but it also speaks to a certain beauty of the product. Um, it needs to be, you know, be, it needs to be a really beautiful product. And then there's also what we call the soul of the product. So the soul of the product is really the piece where you connect to the person who's gonna who's gonna who likes it because they they get that you're, you're speaking to them. And that soul a lot of times may connect to a particular athlete or to a, to a particular insight around a sport. What I'm, what I'm taking from that is there's a lot of artistic expression as well as design that goes into it. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, that's interesting for you, like when you say artistic expression and design, that's cool. I think there, and I, and I get what you mean by that, because, you know, to me, design is saying that, hey, it's gonna work right, it's gonna perform right for you. And artistic expression is, Hey, but it's also going to maybe touch you in some way that's going to excite you, get you excited about some kind of element about it that maybe relates to, to some other thing about, about the artistic expression. So, so yes, there is both, both of those things inside of it. And also, not only artistic, not only beautiful, not only the, that, that performance piece, but it also um, has some kind of an insight about the sport that, that we're really speaking to. What kind of education would be required for someone who is interested in delving into this field. All right. Well, in terms of, of um, if you want to go into a career of footwear design and that type of thing, there's, it's, industrial design is a great um, degree. Industrial design you know, is, a good, is a great degree to have. Personally, I came out of architecture, but I kind of came out, of a, came out in an era that was before the current industrial design pursuit. Um, so, so product design is, a, is now a field that is, that is really developed maybe in the last 25 years. But, but industrial design, which, which also is a part of product design, uh, both of those are really strong, strong fields to pursue for this type of, this type of career. Um, I, I really like architecture a lot only because it's to me one of the higher forms of design. It's, it engages uh, in some pretty deep level, levels, almost like say, classical music does. I mean like classical music gets really deep in the world of music and a lot of times the best musicians are classical musicians but they're not, it's not that popular and you know like say pop music okay you can be a really good you know pop player but you're not, you don't have the skill of say a classical artist. Um, in the same way I think architecture is, is a really strong form of design that you can apply on to say product design, but I think architecture is maybe not as as needed today as as product designers. So product design is a really strong thing. It can come out of industrial design. It can come out of architecture. It can come out of a, a lot of different designs. Yeah, I want to go back to something that you said about architecture being more of a classically trained type of situation, and it kind of like delves into different types types of concentrations. 
Now, go back to what you were saying about the uh, the difference between classically trained art art artistic expression versus like this pop culture right. artistic expression. Right. Do you think there is a uh, pro and con at to to the two? That's cool, actually. I, li I like it. I like to go in there because I think it really helps to be somewhat classically trained. I think if you're classically trained, then you can pretty much pull off anything. And you can, and you can tell the artists that have a little more classical training. Like maybe I'm thinking like a guy like a Kanye. There's something about what he does that, that feels like it's a little more, it comes from a, a richer source. It comes from a deeper place. And, and I think the same way with, um, you know, just with design. If you, if you are approaching modern design like footwear, but you're classically trained, say, in architecture, you're going to come up with some pretty strong references with your product design, with, with what you create. Um, I was even talking to a friend earlier this evening, I mentioned Kanye, he talked about even, even someone kind of back in the day, classic rock, like a guy, Elton John, who was actually, Elton was actually classically trained, and so his music has overtones and all this stuff that's way deep, and he's also got some gospel, he's got some different, so he's kind of got all this different stuff in it, and that's kind of what, what, what enriches something, is when you have a much broader broader place to, to draw from. Um, so, I, so I think the classically trained piece is, is, just gives you a little bit of an advantage. And I, I think, because I also know the roots of the footwear industry, um, what, what happened at Nike came out of architecture. A lot of it came out of architecture. I know that, that the um, guru of, of the, the footwear world, Tinker Hatfield, who's, who's my boss, um, he was trained classically in the, in the School of Architecture at University of Oregon. So he, that's where he came from. That's where I came from also. But so, so Tinker um, and I both look at architectural metaphors when we go to design often. I mean, often we're inspired by architecture, and so the, so the shoes come out ex expressing a uh, pretty rich heritage of design. That's, yeah, so I think it's really important to have that. I think that classic piece could really help, um, help and broaden. It, it, it's kind of it's different, too. It's like if, say, you were going to, if you were trying to design shoes, like, which I think are pretty important products, but they're, they're shoes, say you designed those after maybe just having a training in, say, graphic arts, then you're going to kind of look at it more like, like a graphic thing, but you're not going to look at it with all of its depth and that it's got to house your feet, it's got to like, like contain you and your movement in different sports and, and you know, express your style. And so all that stuff, yet if you're doing buildings, you're, you're thinking about that kind of stuff. So then you can apply that to film. Talk a little bit about how you kind of can't, you said that you're classically trained and you, you originally did architecture. So how did that kind of break down into, uh, down into it. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. When you're, when you're studying in school, a lot of times you don't really even know where you're going to land, where you're going to end up. And that's, that's, that's what I say. A lot of times, you know, we, we, we may see a company these days when you're in school thinking, hey, that's where I want to go. It's almost like get that education, and then when you come out, a lot of times, who knows, there may even be a completely new career that's there once you're out. When I came out of school, there wasn't even the role of footwear design. And I came out of school and, um, in architecture, and I started working for a major firm in Portland, which was called Skidmore, Owings & Merrill, and so they were a big architecture firm. They did big buildings, and I loved working on big buildings, and that was really fun. And I did that for about a couple years, not that long, but then I, and I get laid off and hired and then laid off. And, um, and so I worked around doing architecture in different places, and eventually I thought, hey, um, a friend of mine told me about uh, a job doing space planning and interior design at Nike. And I thought, wow, hey, I can go and work there. I'd be working for the client. I probably wouldn't get, get, be getting laid off. So I go to Nike to do like stores and showrooms and layouts of offices and like that. So Nike hired me to do that. And um, that was really a kick. And I did that for about a year plus. But at that time, which was back in 1984, 83, 84, back at that time, the footwear industry was, was really starting to evolve. And suddenly, you know, Tinker was starting to do footwear design. Um, the shoes, the way shoes were expressed, the way they were designed was suddenly taken on a renaissance. It was really that era. That's where the new air trainers and the, and the air maxes, all that was basically about 87. But, but anyway, this was all kind of happening, starting to brew back right when I first came in that area. And so they moved, Nike, we moved a lot of our designers into product design. So we took people from all different disciplines. And Tinker and I, coming from architecture, was a real natural step into doing footwear. And that, 
and I believe our architectural background really helped help you know make it, make it happen as far as footwear design is concerned. Okay, maybe okay. a word about perseverance and just kind of sticking with it. And yeah, right. Well, you know, you gotta I, I, you gotta trust. I believe you gotta trust. Uh, not only trust in God, but you gotta trust in, that there is a there is a plan and there's a purpose for where you're going, and, and that, that that there's a reason, and, and you gotta trust that that someone someone's watching out for you, and and, uh, and so I think you, that that's really the thing deep down that kind of keeps you moving forward, and and you gotta know that there's that there is a, a reason why you you know you've got a place in this world to make a, to make an impact, and so for me it was always kind of like anticipating something, you know what 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 is that place where am I going to land what, what is this thing that I'm that I'm here for you know and just and because I know my some of my basic drives my basic what they call proclivities or desires or things that I'm into I knew that I I love to design I love to draw I love to do a lot of different things and so just paying attention to those even even music or paying attention to different things that I was into then, then next thing you know the doors open up where your passions are and I think it's really important to follow Follow those passions, and that will uh, that will lead you to your greatest impact. I think in the place where you're called, what you're called. To be. What types of person are best suited? I mean, less yeah. Gordon Gecko and more, yeah, you right, know, something right. a little bit more homely or homey, yeah, I should say, yeah. creativity, things of that nature. Right, right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I think I think the kind of person who would enjoy product design, enjoy this world that I'm part of, is someone who's creative and expressive and likes an opportunity to really make a mark. I mean, it feels a little bit like, um, I think of an artist like an Andy Warhol or somebody who created like multiple images of the same thing. I mean, and, and that's kind of some of the fun that I've had with product design. I mean, you create a, you design a shoe and everybody's wearing it or you see people wearing it. It's a, ma it's a major kit. And so, so if you, you know, if you have some passions to, to just create and to design, um, if you like some, you know, like to draw, I mean, it's, it's a real opportunity to do a a legitimate artistic profession that is that is in um, you know that is in product creation. It, it, it's it's a very you know it's practical yet it's also artistic and it, it's also expressive. Um, when I was growing up, when I was a kid, when I was like five years old, my mom she saw me drawing all the time and playing with blocks, and she says, "Well, you should become an architect because architects make lots of money." That's what she said to me. And I'm like, going, "Okay, mom, I'll be an architect." That's the first time I first three syllable word I learned. But but the thing about it is, okay, when I came out, there wasn't as much of a need necessarily for architects. One reason she said that she didn't want me to be a starving artist, and so I get it. You know, I'm like going, "Okay, I don't want to be a starving artist either." Well, I feel what I'm doing with Nike. I am. It's totally artistic. It's totally a kick and creative and out there and expressive and I'm not starving and, and it's really you know it's a good it's a great real job it's a great you know real way to impact things but but to, but to be on a, on a very creative bent um, yes yeah, so it's, it's a kick so I said that, that kind of person what makes the career that you have fun interesting exciting we'll stick with fun right now and then we'll slide over to interesting exciting after that right so what makes it fun well, what, what makes it fun, I think, is just the world of design. I think the essence of fun is when you come up with a concept that with the aha, and you know, the aha that's kind of in your guts, like maybe you're sketching, and all of a sudden you come to that, to that concept. And, you, and, you, and once again, I just, you know, everybody's got to get to a place where they trust their heart uh, that, that it's going to respond when you're on, on the right track. And so when you, when you hit that, Finally, that sketch is right. That's that's a lot of that's one of the fun elements. And then a lot of times after that, you get to embellish and you get to be really creative about. Well, let me see. How am I going to express this fun insight? And, and and so that's so I think I think it that's the beginning of the fun mm -hmm. is when you get you get that aha in your gut, and that's like really a kick. You know, another thing that's been fun. I feel extremely blessed is that I've had opportunity to connect with some really great athletes. I've had opportunity to be. Uh, to work with Michael Jordan or Andre Agassi, Serena Williams, and they're people who a lot of times they share very similar characteristics. Like MJ, I've never I've never been around a person who listened better than Michael Jordan. I mean, he he so zeroes in, he's so connected, and listens to you when you're talking and what you're saying. And you'll you'll say something, and he'll he'll reference something that you said three years ago or whatever, and you're like, oh wow, you. You remember that, and you, you maybe you try to pull something over on, and he'll he'll say, well, you know, Jordan Brand doesn't do it this way, as we talked about, you know, and he'll go right back. So it's like he's an amazing, he, 
person who, who captures things well. And, and it showed me that part of the answer is the answer to true greatness is being able to listen and to being able to zero in. And I, I got that both from Andre, I got that from, from, uh, from Serena. They, when they're looking at you, when they're talking to you, they, it's almost piercing their eyes because they are so attuned to like really look li listening and trying to understand what this person's trying to do and say. And I think that's how they get the advantage, say, with their opponents, is that they're able to kind of zero in on them. And so, so I really I got that vibe from all these all the major athletes I've worked with, and David Robinson. Different. I mean, I can go through the through the list, but they, you know, Roger Federer, they're. They're a cheater. They're all. They all have that. They share that in common, and they're really just uh, really fascinating people. So, so that's that's another fun thing, and that's another kind of in, uh, what would I say enjoyable aspect of my job has been to connect with these really great people and to just you know really learn. Now, when you talk about it's talk about fun, but then now to think about something that's truly exciting. A lot of the excitement happens when it all comes together. Okay, say you you created a product, I mean, I, right now a few exciting moments come to my mind. There was a, there was a time, uh, one of my favorite was back in 04, and I had been working with Serena for that whole year, and then it was the US Open, and here she is coming out to center court um, in her, you know, the first head and toe outfit that Nike had done for her. And she's like, she's like wearing these boots, and she's wearing this crazy, crazy black, studded dress that was created by the apparel group and, and she was so hooked up and she's walking out of the court with her bag and everything and the lights are flashing like the runways of Paris and it's just like and I'm like sitting there going wow okay this is like really a moment and so 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 for that so that was exciting I mean and the whole time she's warming up the lights are flashing all around her all, every moment and so then and so then right out you know so it's really kind of like Nike's first opportunity to really make a make a statement with her and then it was it felt really successful and the fun thing was I get you know I get home that night flip on Sports Center and it's the lead story and then the next day it was a big story in USA Today and so it's kind of like so I was so that that was an honor, and and I feel very much just a piece of that story because it, you know you, you I can't take it too you know take it too big. But what I can say is that I do feel that I was a piece of it, and that okay. that, that that I'm very you know proud or very excited about. Okay. Um, so you know there's and there's been other things like that too. I mean if you see you know seeing the athletes I guess perform in the product or any athlete because. You know, like like our, our, our founder of the company, Bill Bowerman, said, if you have a body, you're an athlete. And so if if anybody is performing or anybody chooses the product, I'm humbled, I'm blown away, I'm shocked they would choose something off the wall that I had a chance to be a part of. So that's exciting but humbling. And and um, and I and, and so because I know any person who would do that, you know, I'm, I'm, is really that's really a kick kick for me personally. So. And so that's that's been great, and then, and then I'd say another, you know, I just want to go full circle a bit. Some of what I find exciting today, like I've been working with athletes with disabilities, and that's been like one of my favorite, amazing things to be engaged in right now. And I have a have a class where we teach adapt, where I get to teach adaptive design enabling athletes with disabilities. And 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 last year, one of my students designed a. Harness. It was like a, a harness brace that for for an athlete who was paralyzed from the chest down, but he's a wheelchair rugby athlete, a, a gentleman named Will Will Grow, and he's just a, a great athlete. But anyway, uh, Will, um, you know, he's a Nike athlete, and and he so liked this harness that he actually we actually had it made for him because what it did was it locked him in 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 for better control when he's in in, in his in his chair and playing the game, and so. And he liked it, and so did four of his teammates. And so we we made we ended up doing home and away. We did 10, 10 jerseys for the team, and the team took the bronze medal. And so for me, that was like the highlight of the year. I was so that that was exciting. And so it's really not just about the the uber athletes, but it's but it's all people because if you have a body or an athlete, so that's just really exciting. Is there a specific project that you've been involved with that you that's that's your that's your baby that's your pet project that's the one that you mm -hmm. whenever you see it yeah. you're like wow that that's that's mine right there interesting um, you know so pet project there, 
the way that I am in my experiences is that I think I'm getting to the point where a lot of times my projects now it's really not as much about me as it's maybe about who about maybe a group of projects, the products that I've worked on, or um, even the stuff that I've fed into to other people and, and, and the, the impact they've had. That, I get really excited about that now. I mean, back in the day, I'd say, you know, there's, there's been Air Jordans I've got to work on, you know, the Jordan 16 or the Jordan 17, and I, that, that was, that was, those were real challenging. I felt like those products were making me as much as I was making them. I mean, I, I and I, it was hard to keep up because they were really, they were, you know, trying to do the industry leading kind of product and, and not knowing where you're going, you're trying to blaze a trail. So that, that, that was really exciting. So those, those I'm, I'm really proud of. Um, today, a lot of times I find real excitement in say the, the N7 line is something I really love. And at Nike, N7 stands for Native 7. And the seven is consider the impact of your decisions on seven generations. So it's a Native American, um, Aboriginal from Canada, um, uh, Native American Aboriginal um, line of products. And the reason they are, we, we make shoes, some of the shoes that we make, in fact, they're all really made to fit the Native American foot, for one thing. They're basically, they're basically just slightly taller in the instep and in the forefoot. They're, they're basically built around a Native American last. So we have products like that, but we also have other products within the N7 line that are basically sold to, to, to everybody, and, and basically the monies go to support programs for the N7 fund, which is for Native American youth um, throughout America. And so it's just a real, it's a real exciting, I love the N7 line, and I, and I love the notion of seven, consider the impact of your decisions on seven generations. That's, that's very much about sustainability, and it's very inspiring. And, you know, think in seven generations. A cool way to think about it is to think that you're the middle generation, and you have, say, three generations before you, uh, and three generations behind you, and so you so you're learning from your elders, but you're also trying to impact those who are coming after you, and that's a really that's a beautiful way to think about life in general, and um, you know a lot of us come from heritage. You know, we I love the opportunity actually as an African American to be able to work with Native Americans and to come to come to some work there because that's almost like a little bit of a passing on. But some things that they can pass to me is kind of some of their generational pieces because in some ways our historic generations haven't always been so connected in, 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 in society. So that's so so it's been a very healthy interchange for me working with Native Americans and working with their product and, and working with the people and they're beautiful people and it's just it's just been a real kick so much to learn from the way they live off the land and the way they the way they the, the way they approach life in general. So I found so I found the N seven product approach to be very inspiring and you know and, and I'm very proud to be a part of it. So all right. Are you a sneaker fan? <laughs> I love sneakers. You know, just the thing about sneakers, I love sneakers. I love, I've always, you know, love the look and the story and, the, you know, the metaphor, like a car or something. I mean, I think, I think sneakers are like accessible art and design. Back in my day, you know, people were like trying to get great cars. Well, now you can get a sneaker and that's just as, as cool. So I love, I love sneakers, but I also like to look at them as not just objects of beauty, but I like to look at them as the connection between the body and the earth. And to me, the earth is, you know, it's like perpendicular. And it's like, you know, sneakers are that, that interface that connects you to the earth. And it's, and it's an opportunity to really design something that really captures that whole connection. Nice. Um, we're done. If you have anything, yeah, we'll if, if you have any, uh, any parting words? Um, that I would just say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm honored to, to share with you guys. It's very cool. It's, 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 and I also ex especially care about the next generation. I want them just to come forth in, in their own, find their own world. It doesn't have to be about sneakers. It can be about what they're feeling in their heart because they're going to exceed, and I pray they exceed, what, anything I've done.